for today. It abounds. Generation, but perhaps once in the history of a sport. For the last decade, Tiger Woods has dominated professional golf so completely that he has changed the game and come to exemplify the pursuit of excellence. Tiger has been ranked number one in the world longer than any other competitor. He's the youngest to win 10 major championships. On his good days, Tiger shows us that the boundaries of sport can be pushed to the edge of perfection, that swinging a golf club and making a ball go into a hole can be one of the most dazzling performances ever. Tonight, we spend some time with this purposeful, complicated athlete who fiercely guards his private life. We find a man who, at 30, is as committed to giving back off the golf course as he is dedicated to his sport. But first, we meet the man who has come to personify the pure spirit of a champion. You've said that I love to compete. That's the essence of, of who I am. What did you mean by that? I love to compete, whatever it is. We could be, you and I could be playing cards right now and just want to kick your butt. You'd want to win? Uh, no, I want to kick your butt. There's a difference. <laughs> <laughs> and when you're in a tournament, that's what you're looking to do. Yeah. Kick some butt. Yeah. But you do it with such a nice smile. These guys are the best in the world. And I'm very lucky to have that opportunity to try and compete against the best in the world. And that's a rush. For Tiger, the greater the pressure, the bigger the rush. He won three of his first six tournaments this year, all of them on the final hole, two of them in playoffs. No one handles the stress of competition better. How do you explain that? I think it's just concentration. I mean, your concentration is so high and so keen because all this pressure is on you. Your senses are more heightened. Everything seems to flow better. It's, it's a great feeling. When he's in that zone, it can be so unnerving that his opponents sometimes self-destruct. You're aware of that intimidation that you have? I'm aware if I'm playing at my best, I'm tough to beat. And I enjoy that. So when you go out, do you expect to dominate? Do you expect to win? Expect to win, yes. Always. Every time? Yes. It's just a belief you have to have. I mean, as, as an athlete, as a competitor, you have to have that belief in yourself. Mm -hmm. And what separates the great from those who are just very good? Able to repeat it again and again and again. For Tiger, practice is the key, and his work ethic is legendary. He's up at dawn and can stay out on the course for as long as 14 hours, hitting balls again and again and again, off the tee, out of the sand, or on the green. It's a never-ending quest for perfection. When your game is that good, there's still that many things to work oh, God, on that yes. you can stay 14 oh, yeah. hours out there? Oh, yeah. You're never there. You never, ever get there. You never, ever arrive. But sure is fun trying. For Tiger, the fun is as much mental as physical. Nice spin on it. People say that one of your greatest strengths on the course is your imagination. What do they mean by that? Well, I enjoy creating shots. I'm trying to hit a little lower, a little higher, a little right to left, a little left to right. I'm always trying to do something. As a kid, I might have been a psycho, I guess, but I used to throw golf balls in the, in the trees and try and somehow make par from them. I thought that was fun because it's sometimes it's boring just hitting a normal golf shot. You ever go out and just play for the hell of it? Oh, yeah. My favorite time to go out in the evenings. I still love doing this to this day, where I'm Jack Nicklaus or Arnold Palmer or Ben Hogan or Sam Snead or whoever it might be. I have, you know, four or five balls down. And, mm. you know, here's Tiger Woods here on the 18th hole. He's a chance to you know, win the U.S. Open, blah, 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 against these great champions. Uh, so the way kids would play in basketball, going up against Michael Jordan. For, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You do that in, at night on a golf course? Still do. Always will, because you never lose that fun, that passion to compete and live a, live a dream. And I'm able to do that. It's almost like it's an obsession. It is. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to golf. It's an addiction that started when Tiger was so young, it's become the stuff of legend. He was born Eldrick Woods in Cypress, California in 1975. His father, Earl, said Tiger was swinging a golf club at nine months before he could walk. By three, his extraordinary talent was featured on The Mike Douglas Show, 
where he and Bob Hope had a putting contest. You got any money? <laughs> From the beginning, Earl Woods guided, nurtured, managed, and inspired his child prodigy. Earl, who served as a Green Beret in Vietnam, also nicknamed him Tiger after a buddy, a lieutenant colonel in the South Vietnamese Army, who Earl said saved his life. Today at 74, Earl Woods is battling cancer and is confined to his home. Your father played a big role in, in shaping you for this. Too. Tremendous tremendous role. He was my best friend. And, you know, the, having your best friend be your father is a very unique thing. And when he needed help competing against older, stronger boys, Tiger turned to Earl and his special forces training. I came to Dad and said, Dad, can you make me tough? He says, yeah, you're not going to like it. Are you willing to go through it? I said, yeah. And he would get in my grill. He'd really make you feel insignificant. That didn't work. <laughs> Then he'd get to the point of the line, he'd never cross it and back off. That's the only voice that would get me. <laughs> it's my dad's. And then he'd keep pushing the next time, and it wasn't as far. And eventually, I looked at him and smiled, and what are you trying to do here? And he said, all right, you're done. If Earl was coach, his mother, Coltita, was the disciplinarian and official scorekeeper. Born in Thailand, raised a Buddhist, she married Earl while working as a secretary in the U.S. Army office in Bangkok. My dad, ex-Green Beret, thinks he's this tough guy. My dad's was softy. Mom was the one I was always afraid of. You've said that she gave you that competitive drive and that she also gave you a killer instinct. What do you mean by you that? You have no idea how competitive my mom is. She would watch me compete, and you could, you know, you could see her over there on the side, and she'd be living every moment, I mean, die on every shot. What about that? step on their throats, fight to the death, show no mercy. That spot, you have to, no matter how close friend you are, you must kill that person. <laughs> <laughs> when it's over, you can check in, be friend again. Was she tough on you? At times, yeah. She was very strict. She said, if I ever crossed the boundaries that she set, there was always consequences. And did you cross them? Oh, yeah. Well, you always got to test it, you know, any kid. You always got to see what the boundaries are. And what were the consequences? Um, I wouldn't be able to sit for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Coltita was a stickler about Tiger's education. She used to take away his golf clubs until his homework was done. But there was another lesson to teach. Did you experience prejudice when you came to this country? Yes. Very special when I take him from the tournament to the country club. Some of them reject us. They so would reject you? Yes, both of us. Uh, and, and what did you tell him about? I said, Tiger, it's their problem. It's their ignorance. You cannot control other people's action or control their mind. You only control you. And be proud of who you are. So how did you handle that when somebody would, would give you that kind of look that said, hey, man, you don't belong here? My parents always taught me never to waste any energy on that. Just go about your business, put the ball in the fairway, put the ball in the green, and try to make a putt. Tiger's talent was undeniable. He won every national amateur championship for six years running, a first in the history of golf. At 20, he dropped out of Stanford University to turn pro and Nike immediately signed the rookie to an unprecedented $40 million endorsement deal. I guess, hello world, huh? The Nike deal generated resentment and jealousy on the tour. But Tiger, in his rookie year, proved he was more than the front man for an ad campaign with shots like this one. Yeah! <laughs> oh! it went in. With his passion for the game, Tiger drew huge crowds who couldn't get enough of his star power a phenomenon that became known as Tiger Mania. Having won two tournaments, he rode a wave of excitement into Augusta, Georgia in 1997 to his first major championship, the fabled Masters. You still remember that day? Nine years ago, golly. Time goes by quick, doesn't uh, it? Particularly when you're kicking butt. <laughs> <laughs> it, um, that was a, a great moment in my life. 
At age 21, with the lowest score ever, Tiger became the first minority to ever win a major championship. There it is, a win for the ages. Your perspective on that win, has it changed over the years? I guess uh, the whole win was just, was bigger than I thought. Because I thought it was just winning a golf tournament, but it ended up being more than that. What, what did it end up being? You know, socially, Augusta denied access to minorities. You know, Charlie Sifford had qualified, and they kept changing the rules on him. Lee Elder was the first one to break that barrier and have him there on Sunday saying good luck. It meant a lot. These guys sacrificed so much. They ended up winning the tournament that some of them couldn't play. But for Tiger, the win had personal significance. Yeah, I won, and it was by a big margin, but there's more to it than that. Dad, Dad shouldn't have been there. But Earl Woods was there against doctor's orders. He was supposed to have been at home recovering from bypass surgery after a serious heart attack. Instead, he went to the tournament to be there for his son. I went to see Dad, and I say, Dad, hey, Pops, I'm struggling here. I'm hitting good. I just can't shake it in. So he just sat up and he says, why don't you try and do this? I said, all right, I'll try. How's that feel? I said, looks pretty good. We'll just go out there and trust it. Lo and behold, I end up winning the tournament. Probably great that entire week. And that's why you saw the bear hug being so big on 18, because it meant so much for me to have him there. Because it was like borrowed time. He wasn't supposed to be there. Well, he's really big in your life, isn't he? I told you, my best friend. Yeah. Earl Woods told his son, let the legend grow, and Tiger has. Between the 2000 and 2001 seasons, he won all four of golf's major championships in a row, something no one else has ever done. It ranks as one of the greatest accomplishments in sports history. Anytime you can do something that no one's ever done in your sport, and it's sitting around right on your mantle, it's pretty cool. They call that the Tiger Slam? Mm -hmm. do, do you take issue with those people who say, well, it's not really a Grand Slam because it wasn't all in the same year? They can say whatever they want. They didn't have all four trophies sitting on the mantle, did they? At the same time. At the same time, baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> as much as Tiger savors his victories, he's willing to risk losing to improve his game. He's changed his swing twice to make it more consistent. After the last time in 2002, he went more than two years without winning a major and lost his number one ranking. Ooh. All of a sudden, Tiger looked vulnerable. You took a lot of criticism from some in the golf press for changing your golf swing. You changed it twice. Twice, correct. Why? They come better. You were doing pretty well with the original stroke. It always become better. And then the second time? Yeah, it's become better. It's become better. Yeah. Is it difficult to be under the microscope as you are? It's tough at times when you have to justify each and every round. And well, why can't you shoot 67 every day? I'm building something here. It takes time. The changes have paid off. Last year, he won the Masters for a fourth time, putting him on top again. What a finish. The shot on the 16 hole that put you up in the Masters last year. Some say that was one of the greatest shots of your career. Now, here it comes. Oh, my goodness. Have you seen anything like that? You could see it pause right on the lip. I know. You didn't expect to hold that. No, you're trying to get the ball in an area, trying to read it somewhat correctly, and um, it came off like a dream. Hang out with Tiger on the driving range as we did one windy day, and you begin to appreciate the grace and fluidity of his swing and the athleticism he brings to the game. He sculpted his body, putting on 25 pounds of muscle since he turned pro. Why is a golf swing so difficult if you make it look so easy? So many moving parts. Your whole body's moving, and this ball is not moving. It's standing still laughing at you. Uh, I really want to hit that guy out there. 
<laughs> that guy was our cameraman, and Tiger left no doubt that most of the time he can put the ball where he wants. It's having fun. What we used to do is play hacky sack. One of the fun things Tiger can do with a golf ball became famous in a Nike commercial. Some people said that that was done with computers. And... It's actually pretty funny. And I saw Andre Agassi catch a ball on a tennis racket. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Could I do that with a golf ball? <laughs> so I tried it and finally learned how to do it. And when did you try to hit it? Uh, not too long after that. <laughs> That'd be the best shot of my career. <laughs> Tiger is now more than halfway towards his childhood dream of beating Jack Nicklaus's career record of 18 major championships. You've just turned 30 recently, huh? Yeah. Uh, many people say that golfers peak in their 30s. Your best years are ahead of you. Hope so. It's my intent. How long would you play competitively? That's a very easy answer. When my best isn't good enough to win anymore, I'm gone. I'm racked the queue and I'm going home. I could never deal with the fact that as hard as I prepare, as hard as I concentrate, and as hard as I play, I play my best and it's not good enough anymore. Accept the reality and, and move on. As devoted as Tiger is to the game of golf, he says he gets more satisfaction from another part of his life. That part of the story in a moment. is back. From now until March 31st, get 0% financing for 60 months, plus make no monthly payments until October on our full lineup of Jeep vehicles, which can save you up to $8,000 on the new Jeep Commander with three rows of stadium seating, the five-star safety rated Grand Cherokee, and Jeep Liberty, the best-selling SUV in its class. Get 0% financing for 60 months, plus make no monthly payments until October. Hurry, offer ends March 31st. Tonight's programming on Coin News 6 is brought to you by Dairy Queen. Something different. Tiger Woods' power on the golf course is unrivaled, but at the age of 30, he says he's ready to make as big an impact off the course, just as his father Earl has predicted for years. This February, Tiger opened the first Tiger Woods Learning Center in Anaheim, California, close to where he grew up. The center gives fourth to 12th graders from different backgrounds learning experiences they don't get in their own schools, experiences that help prepare them for college and careers. On the golf course in front of millions of people, Tiger is cool under pressure, but he wasn't so cool the first time he saw kids in his learning center. God, I'm, I'm nervous about this. <laughs> You really are nervous. I am, I am, I am. Yeah, that's a dream come true. Now I finally have kids in here. The kids seem to take meeting a living legend in stride. Welcome to the center. What's up, man? How you doing? <laughs> Not much, man. <laughs> Hello. Hey there. Hey there. Hi. <laughs> what's up has become part of the vernacular. That's true. Uh. <laughs> He's like, what's up, dude? <laughs> It's been over four years from dream to reality. How cool is this? Oh, man. It gives me chills. You kept saying, how cool was that? How cool was it? It was really cool. Uh, I mean, see those kids, the smiles on their faces, and they're totally into it. Um, it's more than I ever expected. What the kids are into is a curriculum and a facility that's nothing like their own schools. The 35,000 square foot center is more like an educational funhouse filled with computers, flat screens, and video and music production facilities. And of course, a driving range and putting green. Kids can take robotics, forensic science, creative writing, and rocketry. Courses the kids themselves said they wanted. And all of it's free. We built this for them. If they want to learn and grow, we're going to provide an atmosphere that's going to be exciting for them. So we decided to you know, let them be the bosses. That's great. 
Wasn't like my school. No, well, definitely not one like mine either. <laughs> the center runs vacation and after-school programs for kids who apply and are recommended by their schools. Eventually, it will serve 5,000 a year. Whose idea was this, the center? Well, it was mine. Huh? Yeah. From scratch? From scratch. Yeah, I, I, I just thought we weren't doing enough. I wanted something substantial, something that bricks and mortar, something that, you know, kids could feel and touch and call their own. We join them in forensics class for a lesson in fingerprints. Oh, that's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, wow, you did a better job than I did. We need to blow up our balloon just a little bit. Mine's not very good. <laughs> do you know what you want to do when you grow up? Become a mechanical engineer. Mechanical engineer? Why are kids so important to you? Where does that come from? I guess because I had so many people influencing my life, I wanted to cater this foundation to mentoring and, and guiding because that's ultimately how I got here. Besides the support he got developing his golf talent, Tiger remembers when he was a shy grade schooler who needed help coping with a devastating stutter. The words got lost, you know, somewhere between the brain and the mouth, and it was very difficult. Uh, but I fought through it. Uh, I went to uh, school to, to try and get over that, and I just would work my tail off. And I would talk to my dog. And, and he would sit there and listen, and he'd fall asleep, and <laughs> that's fine, you just lay there. And I finally learned how to do that without uh, stuttering all over myself. Experiences like that one drive Tiger. He put more than $5 million into the Anaheim Center, a prototype for facilities he wants to build all over the country and around the world. Because this is so near and dear to my heart. This is more important than, than any golf shot that I could possibly hit. But wait a minute, you, you make a living playing golf. I mean, golf gives you the, the, the wherewithal to do all of this. Golf's a platform. Um, golf is what I do. It's not definitely not who I am. Um, I, I hit high draws, I hit high face, I make putts occasionally. But I don't get the satisfaction that I get from, from building this and helping kids and putting a smile on their face and giving them hope. At the dedication ceremony in February, Tiger recognized the two people who taught him to give back. There are a few people I want to thank that have made all this possible. Mom and Dad. My father's not here today. He's been a little bit sick. He did want me to deliver one message. Thank you. Man, it's hard. I mean, it really is. It really is hard not to have him there because he's meant so much in my life. And you want to share these things with your parents. Um, I got to share it with mom today. I am so proud of him more than anything. More than anything he does in golf? Yes. He helped other kids. Nobody gives Tiger anything. He have to earn it. He have to do it. So the kids, when you give them a chance, opportunity, they can do it. Tiger can pay for all these centers because he earns so much money playing golf. He's made more than $70 million on the golf course alone, and his outside income is estimated at $85 million a year. He's the most recognizable athlete in the world. His name and image are a global brand linked to blue chip companies like American Express. Bottom line, Tiger's on the verge of becoming golf's first billion dollar athlete. But he keeps his money in two different piles. I always spent what I earned on the golf course. The contracts are, are one thing. I guess that's a, I guess that's earning it in a, in a different way. But I went out there and I earned the money that I, I got on the golf course, and that's what I spent everything on. Um, I would never go above that. Lately, he's bought an estate on the Florida coastline and a yacht that's bigger than most houses. So success has changed some of his spending habits, but not all of them. I'm a little cheap. You do have that reputation. I'm tight. I mean, because. I never had a whole lot growing up as a kid. I always had to save. Then I'd buy like one big thing, like a pair of basketball shoes or something like that. But I'd have to save up my allowances. So now the allowances are bigger and the big things are bigger. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> the boat. Mm -hmm. How much was the boat? Uh, a lot. A lot? Yeah. And the new house? A lot. For someone with such a high profile on the golf course, Tiger keeps his personal life under wraps. 
What's the name of your boat? Privacy. <laughs> was that your idea? Yeah, it was. He wouldn't let us visit him on his boat or at home, and we didn't get to talk to his wife, Elin, a Swedish model and au pair whom he married 18 months ago. But he did open a door to his married life just a little. I have found a life partner, a, a best friend. Uh, you know, Elin's been incredible for me. Uh, she's brought joy and balance in my life, and we love doing the same things. You think I'm competitive? Well, she's way more than me. You want kids? Oh, without a doubt. How do you think that would affect your day job? Family always comes first. Always has been in my life and always will. I may sleep a little bit less. <laughs> and, um, you know, we have to work on that as a team. Can you see yourself giving the kind of time to your kids that your parents gave to you? As best I can, I want my kids to know their father. Tiger says he wants to be known for his work with kids, but most of us know him best for his work on the golf course. I love to play golf, and that's my arena. And you can characterize and describe it however you want. But I have a love and a passion for getting that ball in the hole and beating those guys. And if we were to play ping pong, your, your goal would be to? I'd beat you. <laughs> <laughs> and if you didn't, you'd really be? We'd, we'd do it again. <laughs> So they would become, well, okay, two out of three. Okay, three out of five. Oh, yeah, we keep playing. <laughs> For a look at some special excerpts from the Tiger story, including some clips that you didn't see tonight, log on to yahoo.com and search Tiger Woods. It's a preview of a new relationship between 60 Minutes and Yahoo that will start on a weekly basis next September.